7.15, not 4.15 as my computer's telling me. So we're going to get started. Um, my name is Erica Fike. I'm the conference organizer, and I'll be the chair for this package demo. Um, just for a, a few things, as this is the first package demo of this conference. Um, if you're here in the room, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Niles has asked that he be interrupted with questions, not wait till the end. So feel free to raise your hand and we will bring a mic over to you to ask your question. Uh, online, same thing. You can raise your hand in WebEx or you can put your question in the chat and we will try and get those questions over to the speaker as soon as possible. Um, and then we will have a Q&A at the end as well. Uh, Yep, those are all the housekeeping things I needed to say. So let me introduce you to our speaker. This is Niles Elling. He's a postdoc at the University of Zurich, and he's presenting a framework for multiplexed image processing and spatial analysis. Perfect. Yeah, um, thanks for the introduction, and thank you all for joining. Um, I also want to thank the organizers and everyone um, giving technical support here. It's really great, uh, makes it really easy. Um, yeah, so I'll be looking at the chat once in a while. Um, there are also some, there will be some time where um, I yeah, take a little break and ask if anyone has a question so we can discuss in, bet in between. Um, so here you see the, the landing page or like the, the compiled HTML of the workshop that I'll be giving today. Um, the most of the, yeah, the demonstration will be in R, um, but you can follow along. Um, there should also be a link in the program to this this HTML. Um, so what I'll be presenting is a yeah, relatively newly developed framework for multiplexed image processing and spatial analysis. Um, it is made up by um, three packages. One is called Steinbock. It's a Python-based um, Dockerized framework for image handling and segmentation. And uh, most of the the workshop will um, package demo will be um, on IMCR tools, um, which is a biocontact package to read in spatially annotated single cell data um, and to perform analysis um, on this. I will also quickly demo Cytomap again. This is um, a bit of an older package to visualize um, composite images and segmentation masks. Um, so yeah, the code that I'll be presenting today is on top. Um, so when you click on this link, um, you will directly come to um, the GitHub repository where the, you see this R markdown file here. Um, so you can, can test it out. Um, I also provide the packages that you need to install um, and instruction how to get this, um, this script. So I want to start with a general overview on the tools that I'll be discussing. Um, so we start from multiplexed imaging raw data. Um, ideally, these are just multi-channel uh, TIFF files. Um, here in Zurich, we're working with imaging mass cytometry, which is a commercialized um, um, system. And they provide raw data in the so-called MCD format. Um, so there's a small pre-processing step that Steinbock can handle uh, to generate these multi-channel TIFF files. Steinbock is a framework to read in TIFF files to perform segmentation um, by using a pre-trained neural network. Um, it can then also quantify um, single cell features of these segmented cells and export uh, spatially annotated single cell measurements. Um, as well as segmentation masks and multi-channel images. IMCR tools can directly read in the single cell data to then um, perform a bit of spatial analysis and spatial visualization, and Cytomapper can read in multi-channel images and segmentation masks for visualization. Right. Um, so I'm not going to demo Steinbock here. Um, for this, you would need to install um, Docker. Um, I provide provide instructions here where you can download raw, raw data if you want to test it. Um, the folder, the raw data will be downloaded in um, the data folder. In Steinbock, there's a raw data folder that contains um, four zip files, which contain the raw data and a panel file. This panel file um, is 
only there for annotating the individual channels that were acquired. So in our technologies, we can um, acquire up to 40 proteins at once. We use metal tags to label the antibodies. So this panel file just indicates uh, which um, antibody, for example, here, this is SMA, was labeled with indium 115. There's also one column indicating if this channel can be used for um, single cell segmentation, for example, nuclear for nuclear segmentation and then for cytoplasmic segmentation. The Steinbock framework is, well, initially it's a, it's a Python package um, to make it user friendly, it's dockerized. So what you need to do is you can set a, an alias. Um, so the, the comments that I'm showing here, these are just uh, bash commands. You can set an alias uh, to Steinbock, um, which is just a docker run command. Um, here you need to adjust um, the folder where the raw data is stored. Um, and at the end, you just need to specify which Steinbock version you're using. And then within these uh, six commands, you can read in multi-channel images, uh, you can filter them. In this line, you segment them using DeepCell. This is a pre-trained neural network um, for image segmentation. And then you can measure um, different features of the uh, segmented single cells. The first one here is the mean pixel intensity per channel and per cell. These ones are uh, morphological features as well as the location of individual cells. And the last one is neighbor detection. So here um, spatial object graphs are um, constructed indicating if cells are um, in close physical proximity. Um, and all of this will be written out um, in a folder structure. I can also show you this here. Um, there's this image folder that contains um, um, the multi-channel TIFF files. So here, um, well, looking at the raw data, we have four patients, um, but patient one actually has three images acquired, um, patient two, we acquired four images. Um, same for the masks, we get um, each multi-channel image, one segmentation mask. Um, after measurement, we also get the intensity uh, measures per image, um, as well as the morphological features and then the neighborhood graphs. I can also quickly show you how these multi-channel images look like by just dropping them into Fiji um, and then just adjusting contrast and brightness. So here we have 40 channels, so 40 different proteins measured. Um, this one, for example, here is E. Caterin, a tumor marker. Um, and the last ones here are nuclear markers. And in the mask folder, you have the matching um, segmentation masks. This is segmentation mask for for the first image. So you can see that roughly the, the structure fits. Um, here, every uh, round spot is a single cell with an integer ID, but I will come back to this later. So this is what the Steinbock framework writes out. Um, due to this yeah, very standardized form, um, it's pretty easy to read in this data into R. Um, to make it easier for you, I also provide um, this data on Zenodo. Um, with instructions how to download it. And um, the real package demo will basically start now. So we'll switch to R. Um, and for the first, yeah, for the first sections, I will demonstrate how to read in spatially annotated um, data um, using the IMCR tools package. So here IMCR tools provides the read Steinbock function, um, which reads in the generated data from Steinbock into a spatial experiment object. So 
So here we have a spatial experiment object now with um, 46,000 cells. Um, the counts assay stores the mean pixel intensity per cell and per marker. So here cells are in the columns, markers or uh, measured proteins are in rows. Um, the call data of the spatial experiment object um, stores cell-specific metadata. Um, every cell has an integer ID. Um, we also measured the area, the major axis length, the minor axis length, the eccentricity of this, the cell, and we also read in some metadata from the images from where these cells um, were derived. In the case of a spatial experiment object, um, the cell locations are stored in the spatial quartz um, slot. So here we have the X and the Y position of the cells. Um, the spatial object graphs, so um, these are, this is an edge list indicating if two cells are in close phys physical proximity, are automatically read in, um, into the call pair slot under the name neighborhood. So here we can see the first cell of the spatial experiment interacts with the uh, 27th cell and so on. So this is important for visualization later. The raw data of the spatial experiment object uh, stores um, information contained in this panel file that I showed you earlier. Um, so this is just information uh, based on the antibodies that were used. And again, here the marker SMA um, was labeled with the metal indium 115. Um, the rest is, yeah, relatively ir irrelevant here. Um, I also provide you a fully processed spatial experiment um, on Zenodo. So I'm only reading this in here now because um, this all this spatial experiment object already contains um, a cell phenotype. So in the last entry here uh, for each cell, we have identified if it's a tumor cell, a T cell, a B cell. Here of note, um, this is a cancer data set that I'm presenting here um, containing different cancer types. The full processing was done in this IMC data analysis book. I've added the link here. Um, so this gives a more detailed overview on um, how this analysis can be done. Right. So now we have read in um, the single cell, the spatially annotated single cell information um, extracted by Steinbock. In the next section, um, we want to read in the images. These are ones uh, multi-channel images as well as segmentation masks for visualization. Um, for this, we can use the um, Cytomapper package. Um, I wrote this package to handle multiple multi-channel images. It's really heavily based on the package EB image, which is a really great uh, basis for image handling in R, um, and tweaked it a bit to um, just handle multiple images. So here, the load images function can read in multi-channel images, as well as segmentation masks. When reading in 16-bit images, and this is how we save uh, segmentation masks, um, you have to set this as is parameter to true to really read in integers. Um, and you can also look at um, these individual entries. So here, this is an EB image image object, uh, which stores integer IDs. Um, and here, these are pixels that all come from the cell with the ID 57. We can now ch set the channel names of these images. So currently, uh, images have no channel names. Um, in the case of this, the Steinbock framework, the multi-channel images are um, stored in the same order as the single cell data. So we can directly transfer the row names of the spatial experiment um, to the multi-channel images. And now the cytoimage list object, it's a class exported by Cytomapper, contains 14 images, 
and each image contains 40 channels, similar to what I've shown uh, earlier in Fiji. Um, one important thing is also um, to add the um, element metadata of the site to image list object. Um, this is important to match images between the multi-channel images and the segmentation masks. Um, we want to make sure that the names of both images and uh, segmentation masks match, so they're in the same order. Um, and here we can set the element metadata of the list uh, to contain the sample ID. So sample ID is a, an, uh, an image identifier. This can now be found in the element metadata of images, of masks, as well as the um, um, the spatial experiment object. So there's also sample ID here. So now you can link um, images, the segmentation mask, and the single cell information contained in the spatial experiment object. Right. So another option would all be to generate a single cell data directly from the multi-channel images and the segmentation masks by using um, the me measure object function from um, from Cytomapper. I'm directly going to start this because it's going to take a couple of seconds. So here, for every cell contained in a segmentation mask, it calculates the mean pixel intensity for every channel, um, and then also records morphological features and the locations of individual cells and stores this, in this case, in a single cell experiment object, but since a couple of days, um, Cytomap also supports spatial experiment objects. And at this point, um, I can ask if there are already questions now, since this will still run for a couple of seconds. We're not seeing any hands raised in the room. Um, anybody? I mean, that's honor? good. Yeah, that would be. Uh, <laughs> You're some being very time clear. At the end. <laughs> so what's happening here is now. Well, the yeah, the operations are quite heavy, um, so it needs to iterate through all images. I mean, for our for fourteen images, it's, it's really manageable. Um, doing this for I think we have tested it on 700 images and that was for an hour. So using Steinborg for segmentation is, is definitely recommended. The back end of the single cell experiment. Um, ah, yeah. So, I mean, this is all done um, in memory at the moment. Um, the single cell experiment is usually actually quite small, so we never had issues with this keeping um, keeping it in memory. Um, Cytomap also supports images um, kept on disk, so they are stored as um, H5 files. You can either, yeah, generate them. An external software, or you can use Cytomapper to read in images and then write them out as H5 files. Um, it does, however, make everything slightly slower. So the memory usage is minimal, but um, the computations take a bit longer since individual images need to be read into memory first and then processed. 
So here, the created single cell experiment object um, contains again 46,000 cells. Um, it doesn't, well, it has row names based on the, the channel names that the images had. Um, and yeah, relatively simple call data annotation um, based on the morphological features. So again, the area, the radius, and then the X and the Y location. Since this is a single cell experiment object, it stores in the call data and not the spatial chords. Ah, so will Steinbock also work on single channel TIFFs and would that have an issue with Cytomapper? Um, not really. So we haven't really checked Steinbock on single channel TIFFs. In theory, it should work. Um, there might be an issue with the segmentation because you would need to um, have at least one channel for the nuclear stain and one channel for the cytoplasmic stain. So ideally, you want to have a two or three channel uh, fluorescent image for segmentation. Cytomapper can handle single uh, channel TIFFs uh, for measurement and also for visualization. So for visualization, we're going to select um, um, these three images. Uh, what if you segmented outside Steinbock? Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, the cell, like cell post and Stardis, they support um, only nuclear segmentation. So I guess there a single channel um, will be fine. Um, we tend to do whole cell segmentation. Um, but yeah, if you're using cell post, then there shouldn't be any issue. And it will create a similar segmentation masks to what Steinbock is doing. Okay, so we have selected three images um, and we can now visualize these images. Here I'm coloring them um, based on six markers. Um, and this BCG parameter stands for background, contrast, and gamma. So I'm just enhancing the contrast for each marker. We can also zoom in into these images. So here in red, this is E. Caterin. It's a tumor marker. Uh, in green, you have CD3, a T cell marker. In blue, this is CD20, um, a B cell marker. Turquoise, you can't really see since it overlaps. It's a it's cytotoxic T cells. It overlaps with green. CD38 in magenta is a plasma cell marker, and K67 is a proliferation marker. So Cytomapper only supports up to six colors um, due to spectral over or like at some point you you can visualize more colors. It will just be white. Um, let me finish with the, the uh, visualization section and then I will come back to the question in the chat. So here um, for pixel visualization, we use the plot pixel function. Uh, Cytomapper also exports the plot cells function. And um, this now takes segmentation masks um, objects and can color each cell based on metadata or based on the expression. So in this case, um, we can visualize um, the matched segmentation mask and color them by cell type. So here, um, up here, you can see some tumor cells. Um, here in pink or like light, light purple, um, you see cells that we call B next to T cell due to our low resolution. Um, we can't really differentiate between B cells and T cells if they sit really close to each other. So we just call them B cells uh, sitting next to T cells. You can also provide um, custom color vectors. Um, in this case, the color vector um, is a named vector. Uh, the names here are the cell types and the colors are, um, or indicate how these cell types should be colored. And then you get the same segmentation mask out, um, just colored differently. Also, one thing you can do is you can subset the spatial experiment object um, and you can specifically color a certain cell type of interest. 
So here by setting missing color to white, um, you color all cells that are not part of the uh, spatial experiment object as white um, and all other um, remaining cells in this case, CDAT cells are colored in red. Good. Okay, so there was one question. Um, if you could write your own custom feature extraction function for uh, measure objects. Um, so a pre so the measure object function supports a lot of features already. So you can calculate the mean, median, standard deviation um, in intensities per cell. You can calculate any sort of morphological features. Um, it also supports all funky paralytic features. It's just something that EB Image provides. Um, custom feature extraction is currently not supported, um, but I mean, it would be possible to, to add this via um, an issue or pull request. And then, um, so the EB image propagate a cell body. Do you have experience with EB images propagate cell body segmentation? I, I've used it before. I don't remember that it does a vor Voronoi tessellation. But I'm, yeah, I've never used uh, EB image really for segmentation other than also thresholding and object detection. So I can't say too much about this. Good. So in the last part of this demo, um, I want to switch to spatial analysis. So um, working with this spatial experiment object, um, we have spatially annotated single cell data, um, and we can do some relatively simple things using IMCR tools. First, I've mentioned before that Steinborg generates the spatial object graphs um, by expanding. So it does it by expanding the mask of every cell. And then um, cells are considered in close spatial proximity if the expanded masks uh, overlap. The IMCR tools package also provides the build spatial graph function. So here you can use um, or you can calculate these graphs ad hoc um, using different settings. For example, you can construct a KNN graph between cell centroids, an expansion graph. So here you only detect interacting cells in a certain distance, um, or you can also construct this graph via Delaunay triangulation. We can run all of these commands. So here, yeah, we detect a 20 nearest neighbor graph. And the next graph um, uses an expansion of 20 micrometer. And when you're using the Delaunay triangulation, it's worth setting a max distance. Otherwise, you get uh, funny border effects. Um, all of these graphs are stored in um, the call pair slot under different names. So here, the first entry is the graph exported from Steinbock. Um, this is the KNN interaction graph, expansion, and Delaunay. And now using the um, plot spatial function from IMCR tools, you can also visualize these graphs. Um, so here we are just selecting one image. Um, and we also want to draw edges and we color the nodes by cell type. So when we do this, So I hope you can see this, maybe we can make it big. So here every dot is the centroid of a single cell. It's colored now by cell type. And then you have these gray edges between interacting cells. So Steinbock um, generates an undirected graph. Um, so you have these bidirectional edges between, between cells. Um, the KNN interaction graph, um, it now contains a lot more edges because we detect the 20 nearest neighbors. And it also takes a bit longer to plot since there are a lot of edges that need to be drawn. So 
So here you can see these, these cells are highly connected and I wouldn't really consider them well, direct names anymore, but um, a 20 nearest neighbor graph um, now accounts for larger interactions. And we can also see um, a bit further in this demo why this might be um, needed. And then the last one is the Delaunay triangulation graph. Actually, I skipped the expansion. That's fine. So here, Delaunay triangulation, um, it also um, detects these a bit more long range interactions between cells. One feature of this plot spatial function, um, you can also here um, give the, the image ID and it will plot um, all images side by side. I mean, for our data, so our images are relatively small. They're only 600 micrometer in width and in height. Um, this doesn't render too nicely now. Well, yeah, but here you can already see different structure. For example, these four images here contain uh, the so-called B next to T cells indicating tertiary lymphoid structures. Right, so for the per cell protein expression level, do you use mean or total intensity of the pixels belonging to the cell? So we usually use uh, the mean intensity, uh, which is just the total pixel intensity divided by the area of the cell. Um, there are also other ideas of normalizing this better, um, but for us, it, the, the mean always worked. Um, some people also tend to use the median, but if you have some markers that are only expressed on like certain spots of the cell or just on the membrane, um, the median will be zero um, and this might be an issue. Good. So the next part of this demo um, is how to calculate cell cellular neighborhoods. So this is a term coined by uh, Gary Nolan's lab and they published two papers based on this. The approach is relatively simple. So for every cell, you basically um, calculate the fraction of cell types in its direct neighborhood. Um, and you then cluster based on these fractions. So the IMCR tools package provides the aggregate neighbors function. And then in the um, have it here. Uh, this function generates a new entry to the spatial experiment object um, that is a data frame. So every row here again is a single cell and then you have the fraction of cells in its um, neighboring um, or in its neighborhood. So here um, I'm using the, the 20 nearest neighbor graph. Um, so I'm aggregating across the 20 nearest neighbor neighbors in 2D. And for example, here for cell four, 5% uh, of neighbors are CD4 cells, 10% uh, are T-Rex, and then the rest are tumor cells. And you can then use this information to um, cluster the cells. Here we are just doing simple k-means. Um, okay, and then we can visualize these cellular neighborhoods. So here, these tertiary lymphoid structures, um, they are part of this pink neighborhood. Um, these cyan cells are tumor cells, and these purple cells are um, the, the tumor stroma border cells. We can also visualize the composition of each cellular neighborhood as a heat map. I'm not going to go into details here, um, since um, there are only five minutes left. Um, and for brevity, I'm also going to skip the patch detection function. This one um, allows you to detect um, patches of predefined cells and directly move on to the interaction analysis. So this um, was proposed by Shapiro. Um, it is based on a permutation approach to identify cell type pairs that interact more or less frequently um, 
um, compared to what you would expect by chance. I'm going to start this since it also runs a couple of seconds. Um, so what it does now is per image and per cell type pair, it computes the average interaction count. Um, and then it shuffles the labels in this time, in this case, 200 times and um, generates an empirical null distribution of the average um, cell type interaction count. The actual count will then be compared against this empirical null distribution and these empirical p-values can, um, can be calculated. So you get a sort of a statistical readout if certain pairs of cells interact, um, so attract each other or avoid each other. Yeah, the, the default iteration parameter here is 1000. Um, usually it also works um, if you permute well, two, 300 times or so. Good. So the result is a data frame um, for every image um, and every cell type pair. Um, it lists the average interaction count um, and then provides empirical p-values. Um, and this SQL in, um, entry indicates um, if two cell types are interacting, which is one, if there's no statistical significance, which is zero, or minus one, mean, um, meaning they avoid each other. These values can also be summed up across all images, and then you get these heat maps um, where the color indicates if certain cell types are um, yeah, interacting. For example, here B cells interact with B next to T cells. Uh, two more cells interact with each other, other, but they avoid all other cells, so they're quite compartmentalized and CD4 T cells interact with T-Rex, which is not super surprising. And with this, um, yeah, I'm already at the end. There are also more, or there are links to all the other resources that I mentioned. Um, and I'm not sure if we have time for questions now. I have one question in the room, and I think that will be our, our last one before we move on. Um, hi, thank you for the talk. So, okay, maybe it's a bit early for me to ask this question. Um, okay, I'm actually going to present about it tomorrow in the package demo. It's um, So I wrote a package called Spatial Feature Experiment, which extends spatial experiment. Um, but um, unlike your package, it, um, it stores the cell segmentation poly uh, as, as vector polygons with the with the uh, vertex vertex um, coordinates instead of a max mask, so it's more mm -hmm. memory efficient. So, if um, okay, so maybe like tomorrow, if you get a chance to take a look at a spatial feature experiment, like will you consider like uh, integrating spatial ex feature experiment with into your package? So so it can read in your data as uh, SFE uh, in addition to SPE and SCE. For sure. So there, I mean, I I know the spatial feature experiment. Um, it would be nice. I'm not sure if you already have a reader for um, converting segmentation mask into polygons, but I can also check tomorrow. We are we are using segmentation mask to overlay outlines of cells on composite images, so um, you still need to store images somewhere. Yeah. So I, I also wrote like plotting functions for the polygons, and uh, actually um, you can convert the masks into polygons, such so as using the Terra R package, which which is designed for for raster geospatial data. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. I will check this out. Any other questions from our in-person audience? Oh, okay. Okay, one quick question. So in the interaction plot you are showing, what does t rack interacting with self mean? Like on the diagonal, t rack interacting with t rack, for example. 
Ah, so yeah, it's a, it's a common thing for our data. Um, we usually observe certain cell types to interact with each other. This could be biological, so it could mean that T-Rex are sitting next to T-Rex. Um, it could also be a segmentation or a phenotyping issue where, for example, a single T-Rex is split into two. Um, it's, it's sometimes a bit hard to tell. Um, for example, we know that B cells, they tend to cluster. So they form these, these large bulks of B cells, these tertiary lymphoid structures. So there we expect them to interact more often compared to a random distribution of B cells. But for example, here in neutral fields, they, they don't really tend to cluster except for necrotic areas, which we didn't acquire. All right. Well, in order to give everybody time to get to the next session, we're going to close this one. Thank you very much. A round of applause for our speaker. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, there is a session here in just a few minutes, so you can either stay or head back to the Cure Building. Thank you. Bye.